the criteria for getting bombed out of politics is pretty wide. You yourself were a victim of press attention, which led to your departure. Uh, what do you make of Michael Gove? I mean, do you think he shouldn't lose his job for an omission of taking cocaine, even though as Justice Secretary, for example, uh, and as Education Secretary, he presided over policies which mm. were much tougher on teachers, for example? I honestly think it's a non-issue, Piers. I mean, honestly, from my perspective, we set the bar far too high for our politicians. If this kind of climate carries on, who's going to stand for politics? It's, it's just ridiculous. We've got a point now where well, the people... Well, are... the public would say, and they are saying in big numbers here, 82% of our poll think Michael Gove is now unfit for Prime Minister. Well, they may just the not like Michael Gove. But I mean... the public are much more censorious about this, actually, than perhaps mm. politicians and the media are, because they're saying the guy is a hypocrite, the guy was presiding over drug laws. He said to teachers, you might be banned for life for taking ask, Class A drugs. Yes, ask the same people, would they rather have a politician that can actually sort out the mess of Brexit? Rather have a yeah, but these are the people. Rather have a politician that can sort out what's going on in the NHS. I get so it. Don't wait in I get it, but they... they, they they're are talented politicians. Yeah, but Mark, they're answering, and they're answering in well, a different way. Well, they're being asked one narrow question. If you ask them generally... Well, they're being asked, is he, so, fit, is did he they fit, fit to be did Prime they think, Minister? Did they think Churchill was a good Prime Minister? We didn't I, bet take... you if you, I bet you if you asked them that, they would say, yes, he was a great Prime Minister. But he didn't did take he have a, illegal drugs. Did, did he have a drinking drugs, problem? But what I'm trying to say is that we judge the politicians surely on whether they can do the job, Should we not, not hold on them? what Should happened in the Should we not hold past. politicians to a higher moral account than members of the public? But we also want our politicians to be should real... We not? No, because really? they should be real... Surely they should reflect the public. They should be real human beings with all of the flaws, all of the failings that the public have themselves. That's what we want from our politicians. You couldn't be a drug and abuser. We... You couldn't be a drug abuser and a serving soldier or a policeman or any of those things. I mean, they have very stringent rules about or it. Why is it. Why is it one rule for someone else to be prime minister? Yeah. who would be presiding over all these more things. So, the more significantly, the... can I just yeah. interject, more significantly, you couldn't... You face a ban under Michael Gove as Education Secretary, as he was, if you took or used Class A drugs as if a teacher. If you were going to be a teacher. Yeah. And one, but let's look at the situation of President Obama. You were talking about it earlier yeah. on. An incredibly successful uh, president. If we'd had this particular policy, the public is saying that he shouldn't have been allowed to stand, we wouldn't have had him as uh, President of the United States. We've all done things in our past, I'm sure, Piers, you have 20 years ago, but you've had an incredibly successful career carrying on, unbelievable. But actually, not some in of the, charge of laws. But by some the of the way, things in the journalists. past, some of the things in the past could have people could have said actually. I think it's a perfectly valid point. Chance. And I do think a lot of the, a lot of people in the media, I know because I'm reading some of it, are rankly hypocritical yeah. about these issues. Right? There's no question of that. There is a difference though between a journalist, I think. I and... think you have more influence than politicians. Well, you might do, but you're not an elected official. And I think the difference is but... that the, the public do feel if they're electing people, they do have a presumption of a higher moral code. Now, let's go. Let's go to Let the Nazir decide, Afzal. Then. Nazir Afzal, there's no doubt from the reaction on social media and from our own poll that the public are taking quite a tough line, uh, no pun intended, on Michael Gove here. What is your view? Uh, good morning, Piers. Uh, good morning, Susanna. Um, I'm with you on this, I'm afraid, and probably with your viewers. There are some principles which I think Mark is aware of. The Nolan principles, nothing to do with the sisters. They are seven principles of public life, and they are include honesty, integrity, and accountability. Now, I totally... I've got no issue with, with the fact... Well, I have. It's a crime that he, he took uh, cocaine. But what the problem for me is, is the hypocrisy that you referred to. Namely, you're running a department which is making sure and prohibiting teachers from doing their job. You're running the Justice Department. You're responsible for law and policy. All of those things. And you did not declare this at the time. That's my concern. The right, fact that he's doing okay, so now, me, well, okay, so be me, it. Let me play him. devil's advocate, though, because, as I said earlier, Mark touched on, Barack Obama, uh, when he was a senator, before he became president, openly admitted to taking cannabis regularly, also admitted to taking a little bit of blow, which is cocaine. So there was a guy who admitted all that and then became president of the United States, and by common consent, a reasonably popular one. Why should it be a different law or different rule book, if you like, for being the president than it is for being the prime minister of Great Britain? 
Well, that, obviously, the American people made that judgment. That we, the only people that are going to make a judgment on Marco Gove are conservative MPs and conservative members of, of members of the, of the constituencies. Um, the reality, of course, is that yeah, you know, I spoke to my children last night. They were joking about the fact that a Gove is a line of coke and a Boris is two lines. They were talking about Hen you know, we already know Henry is an eighth of an ounce. When you children are joking about you, and we know that the there's a real trust deficit, a real trust deficit between what the public want and what they're being given by those in public life. You have people now saying that their closest friends or family members have been stopped, searched, arrested, prosecuted for the same crimes for which somebody can now become Prime Minister of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. That's, to my mind, the kind of thing can that will evolve, damage though? confidence okay, but look, in public look, I, 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 look, I totally get everything you just said, and many of our viewers will agree with you, but can you not be allowed to evolve as a human being? Michael Gove was not a politician when he did this, or we, that's what he says, and no, no one's disproven that so far, the timeline. Uh, he wasn't a politician, he was a journalist. I don't think journalists are held to the same moral code or accountability in this kind of area as politicians, because they're not elected officials. They're normally paid by you know, private companies, individual companies and so on, who have their own code for their own employees. But is there not here a, a situation where Michael Gove has said, look, this happened 20 years ago when I wasn't a politician, I've evolved, I've moved on, I really don't think drugs are a good idea, they're a bad thing, I wish I hadn't done it, I feel ashamed. I mean, you know, many people will say, well, fair enough. I'm, I'm with him on that. It's, he, I think he needs to go further. He needs to go further and say, the damage that drugs are causing to our society. All right, he wrote an article 20 years ago talking about how middle-class drug use is fueling working-class crime. You know, I've lost a nephew recently to knife crime. There is a substantial number of people losing their lives, being damaged because of middle-class drug use. He could go on a limb now and go on a campaign to talk about this issue. But no, he wants to put it to bed and get people to vote for him to become prime minister of this country. I don't think that's good enough. We, have a, we, we do expect a higher standard from those who are leading us and that must be the right thing but, uh, well Marcos and your point is we need real people leading us and of course real people make mistakes don't they but in his position as education secretary in his position as Lord Chancellor as Justice Secretary should he have attempted to change the law to be more lenient perhaps on cocaine users which would have reflected his own experience or should he have recused himself perhaps from those areas of the law where he said actually I've you know transgressed here Look, I think we want human politicians, we want people to be able to have the space as politicians to tell the truth about mm. what they've done. And then, when they tell the truth, we want them to be consistent so that they do actually say, I'm voting this way because this is something that I believe passionately in. At the moment, the politicians don't have the space to be truthful, and that's yes. how the trust breaks down with the public. So they end up being hypocrites because we don't allow them to tell the truth about who they actually are. Or certainly 20 years ago, it was extremely difficult for someone to talk about their sexuality. In your case, In you my mean. case, mm. to talk about uh, drugs. We've now surely got a climate where the public are actually more acceptable, so it's time for politicians to be more truthful mm. and to try and actually build that bridge of confidence. And that can only be done if politicians can really talk openly about these issues. When they can't, they hide them, and then we have the ridiculous scenario of everybody suddenly having to shamble around saying, oh, I did this, I did that. Yeah. That's not a healthy democracy. Well, we don't want, do we, um, Nazir Avzal, we don't want squeaky clean people only in our public life, because we had Theresa May and you wouldn't get more squeaky clean than her. Her most naughty thing she ever did, she said, was running through a wheat field, right? <laughs> um, and she turned out to be a complete disaster. Whereas Winston Churchill, for example, you know, would wake up, he'd have half a pint of whiskey for breakfast, he'd chain-smoke cigars all day. He did a fairly loose life in that respect. Um, you know, social media would kill him now, probably, for that kind of behaviour as Prime Minister, and yet he saved this country from the Nazis. I mean, at what point do we... Uh, allow moral frailty, if you like, to be a determining factor in who can lead a country. Ah, oh, we've lost... We've lost oh, Nazir I'm so Afzal. sorry. Apologies he, to you and Nazir Afzal. He can hear us and we can't hear him. We'll fix that. Uh, Mark Oden, I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Bill Clinton and JFK... Yeah. Uh, John F. Kennedy were the two most popular post-war presidents the United States has had. Both were serial womanizers, you know, probably on the moral code, failing every every tick in every yeah. box. And, and look at Boris Johnson. And yet, He's popular as and well. And hugely popular. Boris Johnson 
you know, admitted to me in an interview in GQ magazine back in 2008 that he had taken cocaine and regularly taken cannabis. He then tried to make light of it and say he sneezed and so on and so on. But he did admit to me he did it. You know, if, we, if, if Michael Gove is deemed to be unfit for prime minister, which our poll at the moment, 83%, says he is, which is a huge... But honestly, the reaction on social media is huge. And I think it's because the public feel, not that he wasn't, in, you know, entitled to a life 20 years ago, but that there is a rank hypocrisy in somebody becoming education secretary, many of them are saying, and having draconian rules about mm. teachers mm. and actually not applying them to himself. And also, it's the hypocrisy. hypocrisy about do as I say, not as I do. How come, you know, I'm sure a lot of people think, how come it's all right for you if you're in the cabinet, sure. but not OK for someone who just happens to but be I, I a real to person? Point, at the moment, we've got a pretty dreadful bunch in Parliament. It's, yeah. it's been an absolute shambles for the last two years. Mm. I think there's a lot of great people out there who could come into politics who are absolutely terrified of doing it because of the Twitter hunt of what they do. I agree with that, you see. Ago. I think this we've is a really... We've got to change this yeah, culture. I agree with I that. Right. To, we've got to relax. I agree with that. We've got to relax. Now, we've got Nazir Afzal back. Just for a final word, uh, Nazir, I think the, the point I was making really is, yeah. do we really want a bunch of Theresa Mays <laughs> uh, who are squeaky clean, never touched anything, run through wheat fields and think that's all terribly yeah. naughty? Is that going to help this country to have that kind of no, person we, we, as the only person we allow into Parliament? We want real people, we want authentic people, we want people to understand what's happening on our streets. I, I, I've, I said I've got no problem with the fact that he's taken the drugs. What I want him to do now is to campaign against the terrible impact that drugs are having on our streets. And by not doing so when he was Minister for Justice or Minister for Education, unfortunately, people don't trust him anymore. And that, to my mind, is the concern here. You know, I've got no problem with politicians being real. I want them to be real, actually. Admit when you've got things wrong, but also so try and put things right.